this is now the part 9 of the LEED V4 Reference Guide for Homes Design and Construction Online Review. Again, all the pictures or images in this video are from Google and USGBC website. If you have comments, suggestions, or complaints regarding the images, pictures, or in this video itself, please email me at nelka underscore rocco at yahoo.com and I will immediately reply to you and take action on whatever the reason of your email. Thank you. Why I created this online reviewer? To help myself and others to pass the lead AP exam in one shot. These are the lead credit categories. On my previous video, we discussed the location and transportation credit 5, the access to transit. Now, we will proceed to sustainable sites. Prerequisite 1, the construction activity pollution prevention. Sustainable Sites or SS Overview Although the focus of green building is typically on the built structures, the design of the site and its natural elements can have significant environmental consequences, good or bad. The Sustainable Sites or SS category rewards project teams for designing the site to minimize adverse effects while the Location and Transportation category rewards project teams for choosing a preferable site location. How a building is incorporated into the site can benefit or harm local and regional ecosystems and reduce or increase demand for water, chemicals, and pesticides for site management. Good decisions made early in the design process can result in attractive, easy-to-maintain landscaping that protects native plant and animal species and contributes to the health of local and regional habitats. Rain that falls on a site can cause soil erosion and drown off of chemicals and pesticides, or it can offset potable water demand and recharge underground aquifers. Plant growth can be a burden requiring regular upkeep, watering and chemicals or it can enhance property values while improving occupants' comfort, absorbing carbon, enriching the soil, and providing shade, aesthetic value, and habitat for native species. Site design should take into consideration not only the aesthetic and functional preferences of the occupants, but also long-term management needs, preservation principles, and potential effects on local and regional ecosystems. Figure 1 shows the pathway through the SS category. On the start, you can go first to the prerequisite which is the construction activity pollution prevention, then to the next prerequisite which is the no invasive plants, and then for the first credit which is the heat island reduction for 2 points, rainwater management for 3 points, and non-toxic pest control for 2 points. Construction activity pollution prevention is the first prerequisite of sustainable sites. It is required. Construction Activity Pollution Prevention Intent To reduce pollution from construction activities by controlling soil erosion, waterway sedimentation, and airborne dust. It is a prerequisite or a required. Requirements Stockpile and protect disturbed topsoil from erosion. This is for reuse. Control the path and velocity of runoff with silt fencing or comparable measures. Protect on-site storm sewer inlets, streams, and lakes with straw bales, silt fencing, silt socks, rock filters, or comparable measures. Provide swales to divert surface water from hillsides. Use tear, erosion blankets, compost blankets, filter socks, berms, or comparable measures to stabilize soil in any area with a slope of 15% or 6.6 .6 .6 into 1 ratio or more that is disturbed during construction. Prevent air pollution from dust and particulate matter. Construction sites larger than one acre must conform to the erosion and sedimentation requirements of the 2012 U.S. Environmental Protection Agency construction general permit or local equivalent, whichever is more stringent. Here are the example images for the stockpile and protect disturbed topsoil from erosion. Sample images for control the path and velocity of runoff with silt fencing or comparable measures. Another examples for the protection on-site storm sewer inlets, streams, and lakes with straw bales, silt fencing, silt socks, rock filters, or comparable measures. Sample image for providing swells to divert surface water from hillsides. 
Sample images using tears, erosion blankets, compost blankets, filter rocks, berms, or comparable measures to stabilize soils in any area with a slope of 15% or 6.1 is to 1 ratio or more that is disturbed during construction. Here are another sample images for preventing air pollution from dust and particulate matter. And lastly, here are the sample images for construction sites larger than 1 acre must conform to the erosion and sedimentation requirements of the 2012 U.S. Environmental Protection Agency Construction General Permit or Local Equivalent, whichever are more stringent. Behind the intent, site clearing and earth moving can contribute to runoff, soil erosion, and alteration of natural drainage patterns both of on-site and off-site. Each year, roughly 80 to 100 tons of soil per acre in the U.S. alone is lost because of construction. See further explanation topsoil. The runoff can carry pollutants and debris to lakes and streams and damage stormwater management infrastructure. Airborne dust for construction can exacerbate respiratory illnesses and damage surrounding property. Compacted soils from parked vehicles makes it difficult to establish new landscaping. The construction general permit developed by the Environmental Protection Agency or EPA outlines practices that construction operators must follow to comply with National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System or NPDES. Stormwater Regulations See further explanation, construction general permit. The permit covers sites 1 acre or 0.04 hectare or larger, plus smaller sites within a large common plan of development or sale. Adherence to these practices can prevent soil erosion and preserve the quality of water in the surrounding areas. This prerequisite requires that all projects take measures before and during construction to limit soil erosion or surface areas surrounding the building site. Step-by-step -step guidance. Step 1. Assess current site conditions. Before construction, determine soil types, infiltration capacities, slopes, drainage patterns, and site discharge points. And note natural features such as trees, streams to be protected. Step 2. Establish pollution prevention and water quality protection goals for project. Incorporate the specific elements of the plan into the construction drawings and specifications with clear instructions on responsibilities. Clearly articulate erosion control strategies and expectations and share them with the project team. Educate crews on the purpose and implementation of the erosion control measures. If the construction site is larger than 1 acre or 0.4 hectare, Conform to the erosion and sedimentation requirements of the 2012 Construction General Permit or local equivalent, whichever is more stringent. Here are the sample images for establishing pollution prevention and water quality protection goals for the project. This image is from the best management practices. Another example showing the infiltration, the sediment lugs, and the temporary stabilized construction for a drawing. Another sample images for a sample erosion sediment control practice plan for a typical one or two family dwelling under construction. Continuation to step-by-step -step guidance. Step 3. Select and install effective erosion and sedimentation controls. Measure to stabilize soil in any area with a slope of 15% or 6.6 is to 1 or more that is disturbed during construction include tiers, erosion blankets, compost blankets, filter racks, and berms. Techniques to minimize release of dust and debris include watering dry earth, covering stored topsoil, and fill dirt, and covering raw earth areas with gravel or temporary seeding. Step 4. Prepare site management plan. Schedule regular maintenance of the chosen erosion and sedimentation control measures. Identify material and vehicle staging areas that minimize disturbance of the site. And prepare a spill response plan. Step 5. Inspect and maintain site throughout construction. Conduct regular inspections and make all required corrections to erosion and sedimentation control measures, particularly before and after storm events. This is the sample image of the site management plan showing the top view or the plan view and the elevation views. We will now proceed to further explanation, topsoil. 
The most significant on-site consequence of erosion is the loss of topsoil. Topsoil supports plant life, regulates water flow, and maintains the biodiversity of soil microbes and insects that control disease and pest outbreaks. Construction General Permit On large sites, more than 1 acre or 0.4 hectare, a Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan or SWPPP may be required under NPDES or local regulations to determine whether the project needs to comply. Construction stormwater discharges are often permitted under the Construction General Permit. The permit requires compliance with effluent limits and other standards, such as the development of a SWPPP. Even if an SWPPP is not required, use the NPDES standards as a guideline on how to develop and implement an erosion control plan. Typically, the civil engineer or landscape architect identifies erosion-prone areas and outlines soil stabilization measures. The contractor then adapts the plan to implement those measures and address rain and other causes of erosions. The erosion and sedimentation control plan should be incorporated into the construction drawings and specifications with clear instructions regarding responsibilities, scheduling, and inspections. Related Credit Tips SS Credit Rainwater Management the Strategies for controlling erosion and sedimentation can contribute to long-term plans to restore or maintain the natural hydrology and water balance of the site. Changes from Lead for Homes 2008 This prerequisite is based on SS 1.1 in Lead for Homes 2008. Two requirements has been added. One is to prevent air pollution from dust and particulate matter. And two is construction sites larger than one acre or 0.4 hectare must conform to the erosion and sedimentation requirements of the 2012 construction general permit or a local equivalent, whichever is more stringent. Contract language recommendations. For builder, before construction, assess the current site conditions. Install and maintain designed erosion and sedimentation control measures throughout the construction process. Perform regular inspections and corrections to installed controls, particularly before and after storm events, to ensure measures are functioning properly. For contractors, review all pollution prevention and water quality protection goals for the project. Comply with the pollution prevention plan. And for the site clearing and grading contractor, install erosion control measures as specified in the stormwater pollution prevention plan. Technical Resources Developing your stormwater pollution prevention plan A guide for construction sites, Environmental Protection Agency or EPA 833R060004-2007 With our website, epa.gov slash npdes slash pubs slash sw underscore swppp underscore guide dot pdf Erosion Control Technology Council with their website ectc.org slash and International Erosion Control Association with their website ieca.org Reference Standards National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System General Permit for Discharges from Construction Activities Exemplary Performance Not Available Verification and Submittals Supporting verification materials made available by the project team Provide copy of construction-related pollution prevention plans if available Provide photos of all pollution control measures Group Project Single plan that meets prerequisite requirements may be used for entire development. Verification team. Conduct on-site verification that all applicable erosion and pollution control measures are installed. Glossary or definition of terms. Infiltration. HVAC. Uncontrolled inward air leakage to condition spaces through unintentional openings in ceilings, floors, and walls from unconditioned spaces or the outdoors caused by the same pressure differences that induce exfiltration. This is from ASHRAE 62.1 of 2010. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Watch for the next video. Lead V4 Homes Sustainable Sites Prerequisite 2 No Invasive Plants.